This video is sponsored by Alcet E Homes, whose mission it is to accelerate the advent of sustainable healthy living systems around the world. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 73. Volkswagen is off to a bit shaky start in China with their EVs. Tesla, on the other hand, is still sprinting along. Honda discontinues one of their fuel cell cars. And Sandy Monroe will rip apart a Tesla Model S Plaid. And we do see the Tesla Model S Plaid racing up a mountain. And Tesla shows off their software power, while Volkswagen doesn't really show off. All this and much more to come on today's episode. Let's dive right in. Sandy Monroe will rip apart a Tesla Model S Plaid. Sandy Monroe has been selling stickers to try to get money enough to buy a Plaid Model S. But now we learn that he has already bought one. This is so exciting. I can't wait for Sandy and his team to rip this car apart and show us a little bit more about the inside of the car and how it's built and so on. And they should get the car in only two weeks. That is going to be so exciting. I know some of you are afraid that everyone else will just copy Tesla and all their technologies. But remember, they have been able to do that with the Tesla Model 3 and Y and no one of the old OEMs in Europe or the US has bought these reports from Sandy. Even if they do, they have a lot of things they still don't know. Remember what Sandy said about the magnets in the Tesla motors. But the big thing is, <laughs> I can't reverse engineer this damn thing. And again, the machine that is making their new carbon wrapped motor is not something they can just go out and buy. Tesla has made that machine so I'm not so worried. And sure, some of the Chinese will probably buy this report, but remember, the ones that are just following in your footsteps will never lead. So Tesla will continue to lead and everyone else will just help Tesla with their mission. And if you want to help Sandy and his team out, I will leave a link below to the sticker you can buy for 13 bucks and help them out. And Volkswagen is off to a bit shaky start in China with their two models of the ID4. Volkswagen did say they were hoping to sell about 60,000 ID4X in China a year. But in May, they only sold 1,200 ID4X and ID4 Cross combined. And that is 200 fewer than in April. So going down, not really ramping up. And that is more about an annual run rate of 14,000 units combined. So they still have a long way to go to get to their original target. And in other signs of sales stress, SAIC Volkswagen has suggested staff members to buy the ID4s, according to an internal memo seen by Reuters. <laughs> yeah, classic Volkswagen. When there are no customers, sell to yourself. And Volkswagen said in a statement to Reuters that the ID China sales were in line with expectations as they build up production and new sales network, adding it does not view Tesla's Model Y as a direct competitor to the ID4, which occupied a different vehicle segment type. Yes, very different. <laughs> what? I understand why they don't want to be put up against the Tesla Model Y, because it sold six times more than the ID4 in its first two months when it was launched. And if we look at the sales numbers as they did look in May, well, we do see a little bit of difference between Volkswagen's two models and Tesla's two models. But all jokes aside, this is actually quite crucial for Volkswagen to have success in China because China is Volkswagen's largest market. China makes up over 30% of all of Volkswagen sales. And no one is pushing harder than China for EVs. But Reuters did talk with some Chinese customers who said that Chinese people really like high-tech stuff. Like this 50-year-old customers that said the ID4 looks okay, but it's just not smart enough. Unlike Tesla's models and the growing numbers of vehicles from Chinese electric car makers like Xpeng and NIO, the ID4 cannot park itself, it does not offer advanced self-driving features, advanced voice control and so on, functions that the Chinese people want. 
So if nobody wants to buy their EVs in China, Volkswagen is kind of screwed. So hopefully it is just starting difficulties and we will see better numbers in the coming months. But I think this guy from Wells Fargo is onto something. There's a massive amount of data coming out of the car. And actually my concern for the traditional automakers is that they've spent, you know, they were spending too much time maybe chasing electric powertrains and not enough at developing the technology. I really think Tesla is a technology company. That's why people are buying the cars and it happens to have an electric powertrain inside it. Yes, Volkswagen have spent all their time and money trying to catch up with Tesla's powertrain. Therefore, like an way behind in software. And that could be the thing that's going to hurt them in China. So Volkswagen has now their MEB platform, which still can't match Tesla's in range and performance, but they are just light years behind when it comes to software. Just to give you an example here, here we are on Volkswagen's homepage. And as you can see here, there's an update, software update for the ID3. But no, you still can't get an over-the-air update as they promised with this car that they started production of back in November 2019. You have to go to the retailer. And it is not just a quick 30 minutes in and out. Nope, this is what they wrote. The software update takes around 7 hours hours to complete, but we will need your car for two days. Your Volkswagen retailer will provide alternative transport if required. Two days for a software update. <laughs> Can this be more inconvenient? I have just had a software update for my Tesla Model 3. It notified me on my phone saying there is a software update available. I pressed the button install now and it did while it was sitting in my garage and it took about 20 minutes. That is just night and day. But luckily, this update should make it possible to get an over-the-air update going forward, right? Well, I don't actually think it will work as we know from Tesla where everything can be fixed with an over-the-air update because they do right. This means that the car will not need to go to the retailer for minor software updates in the future. For minor updates. So still, if they have normal or big update that really matters, they still have to go to the retailer? This is insane. I'm not quite sure about this, but I do understand why people in China would prefer Tesla's Model Y over the ID4 if they like tech. Because maybe the powertrain is getting closer, but the software experience is just night and day. And Volkswagen board members Ulrich did just confirm Wednesday that they do not earn money on their EVs. Volkswagen and the other OEMs are standing in front of a very difficult switch here. The market is pushing for EVs and they say they want to lead but are behind in software, powertrain, motors, range, performance and the cost of making the EVs compared to Tesla. They are losing money on their EVs but they have to scale up and fast if they don't want people to see just how far behind they really are. And people in China don't want to buy their cars over a Tesla because of the lack of software and technology. And Volkswagen dealership don't want to sell them because of the lack of maintenance. And Tesla is just growing with plaid speed. This is truly an uphill battle for Volkswagen. Even though many think that Volkswagen will crush Tesla sales, I just don't see how that will ever happen. And speaking of China and Tesla sales, well, Tesla is doing very well in China. Ray for Tesla did share these numbers about premium cars sold in China in May. Ice or EVs, just premium cars. And Tesla is the fourth best selling brand in the premium market. Man, that's impressive. And another country that is pushing just as hard for EVs than China, if not even more, it's Norway. And it's a very good showcase of the short sellers claim in the beginning of every quarter that Tesla sales have flatlined. And get ready because we are about to end the Q2, so we will probably see a lot of thought from people that just don't get it here in July about Tesla's weak demand in Europe. Because as we can see here in Norway, the Tesla Model 3 is back on the top spot as the best-selling EV in Norway. But if we look at April, the first month of Q2, we can't even find the Tesla Model 3 in the top 20. We have to scroll way down in the bottom to find the Model 3 with only 4 units sold. Flatlined! But then comes May. 
the second month in the quarter. And now we see the Model 3 suddenly being the number 5. And we see the Mustang mach -E's really taking off and the ID4 and Enyaq are also outperforming the Model 3 as well. Flatlined. But then comes the last month of the quarter and boom. Tesla is back on top, outperforming everyone. And even though they only delivered 4 units in April, Tesla Model 3 is still the best selling EV in Norway year to date. You can go and have some fun with these numbers yourself and you will see it is almost an exact copy of this every single quarter. And so many short sellers just simply don't get it. Getting kind of embarrassing guys. And while we're waiting for Elon's two weeks to pass so we can get that full self-driving beta version 9. Andrew Capathy did talk about their full self-driving software. Yes, Andrew Capathy just held a little lecture about the Tesla AI vision at a workshop for autonomous driving. And he did talk about some of Tesla's power in terms of computer power, where Tesla has maybe the fifth most powerful computer in the world. And no, that is not the Dojo computer we have been talking about before. Dojo will be a level up from that. Nuts. No other car company has this kind of computer power not even other companies working on solving full self-driving has this kind of computer power this is such a big deal i just don't think people get it and he talks about how their vision-based sensors has become so much better than both radar and lidar that those sensors is actually more in the way than adding benefits but I did just make a whole video about this, so if you haven't seen that one yet, you should definitely go check it out. And Elon did tweet that Tesla will hold the Tesla AI day in a month or two. Oh yes please. And the Tesla Model S is starting to show off at the drag strips. Someone tells me he may not run it all the way out, that's what Craig's telling me, because it says way too... Wow, that thing's fast. Yeah, very fast. Taps the brakes. At mid track and goes taps the brakes 1084 at 113. And we got some more videos about people getting the Tesla experience plaid version. What the fuck? <laughs> 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 Holy shit. This is so powerful. <laughs> it's the fastest car in the world. Oh I wasn't my kidding. God. <laughs> Yes, Tesla owners that are used to Tesla's acceleration are just not easy to impress. And Gigafactory 5 in Texas has also gone plaid. Or at least they are still speeding along and Aaron did get this great plaid picture from the site. And we did see the road that Tesla is building from the factory under the highway over to the other side past the SpaceX factory is sprinting along too. And there are a lot more than just four roof pieces up that we saw last week over the casting area. And it looks like the metalwork on the other side of the factory will be done maybe in a week. And the environmental minister of Brandenburg, Alex Fugel, said about Gigabalin factory, we are convinced that it's right to give Tesla preferential or special treatment because it has an incredible positive Europe-wide impact. We are now going to see the transition to electric mobility happen much faster than we would have thought just a few years ago. Exactly. The EV revolution is coming much faster than people think thanks to Tesla. And I did make a mistake in the new show two weeks ago where I showed off some pictures of the Giga casting machine being far from finished. But that picture was very old. Sorry about that. As you can see here, both of the two Giga casting machines at Giga Factory 4 is both almost complete. So maybe the casting pieces they were testing was from their own casting machine at this factory. And Giga Shanghai is preparing for a huge batch of cars to export in Q3. In April and May alone, the factory shipped 25,701 vehicle. But this is just the beginning. In June, Thousands of Teslas made in China will be delivered to numbers of European countries as well as Israel, Australia, Japan and South Korea. Yeah, this factory that the short sellers didn't believe in is really doing some amazing work lifting Tesla to new heights here in 2021. And Tesla launched their energy business in China with this new supercharger station they put up in Lhasa, Tibet. 
that is powered by solar panels and power walls. This supercharger is the first of such a facility in China. This, of course, does not mean that Tesla Energy is going to spit out power walls and solar panels in China, but one can hope this is the first step because that is a very big potential market for Tesla in China. And hopefully Tesla will soon start building a Gigafactory or two in Africa, because it is much needed. According to this article from Dutch National News, oil companies are exporting gasoline to Africa that is up to 300 times more toxic and polluting than the gasoline they are selling in Europe, leading to thousands of deaths, especially among children. So just because the countries in Africa doesn't have the same kind of strict laws about emission, the oil company thinks it's just okay to send the worst kind of gasoline crap down there. What the actual Yeah, the oil companies are here to earn money, nothing else. They don't care who dies in the progress. We need to get rid of all these disgusting ice cars as fast as possible. So please Elon and Tesla get to Africa as fast as possible. They are much in need down there. Hopefully the factory we know that is in the works in India that will also hopefully be building some more affordable EVs for the Indian market will also start exporting them to Africa. And we do know that Tesla Energy is already in Africa and has helped out Econet Wireless, Zimbabwe's largest mobile phone operator, to put up a lot of power walls to help them stay online when there is an outage. Econet currently has 520 lithium-ion batteries that are used to provide backup power for its 1,300 base stations. The telecommunication company said that the use of the batteries had caught reliance on diesel-run generators by 7 75%. Now that is awesome and again something Tesla is helping with. But we need some electric cars as well and even more solar and battery storage power plant. That would just make so much sense in Africa. But I did make a whole video about Tesla in Africa back in April 2020. If you haven't seen that one yet, you should definitely go check it out. And another one buys the dust. Honda discontinues fuel cell car. Clarity on weak demand. Yes, demand for the fuel cell vehicle is not looking good. Just look at this chart from fuel cell vehicle sales in the US. It is not slowing down, it is dropping off a cliff. And we can see fuel cell on this chart. Well, it's actually quite hard to see them because they have not taken off at all in the last five years. And Honda also announced that it will end production of combustion motors by 2040. Well, that is kind of obvious, because there will not be any ice market left in 2040 for new sales of ice cars, only the used market. Even though Bloomberg New Energy Finance prediction of EV adoption only has like a little over 60 million new car sales being EVs in 2040. But if we look at that chart, we can see they don't expect more than about 25 million EVs in 2030. But if Tesla hit their target of 20 million EVs in 2030, we will be at a much higher place. So I do disagree quite a bit here with Bloomberg. I still think this will happen much faster. And if we put full self-driving cars into the calculation, we will not need 60 million cars in 2040. But no matter what, I still think Bloomberg is way off here with only 25 million EVs in 2030. Even Audi has announced that they will stop making new car ICE models by 2026. Of course, they will continue producing all ICE models they do have, but just not make any new ones. And by 2033, they will be fully electric. And BMW, of course, clueless about the EV revolution that is happening, doubting what Audi announced. If a manufacturer then no longer has an internal combustion offering, it loses half of its market volume and finds itself on a business contraction path. In less than a decade, nobody wants to buy your stupid ice cars and you will not be allowed to sell them anywhere in Europe. If you don't make this switch, you will not have any business at all because the ice car business is going away if you like it or not, BMW. The only question is, are you ready for it? And just a little word from down under, from milling, from Tesla Taxi, that is expanding.
Hey Lars, thanks for taking my call. Um, yeah, just wanted to give you a quick update on how things are travelling with Tesla Taxi down here in Australia. We're just uh, heading down to the Gold Coast at the moment to swap over this Model X with a Model 3 performance for someone that's got a long-term booking. Uh, so he's always got a mix of different cars. Um, we have just launched uh, F-150 Lightning rentals.com which is our USA brand so hopefully next year we'll grab a few of the F-150s and a few Cybertrucks trucks and uh, do a similar thing over there in America and uh, eventually hopefully we'll uh, we'll also set up a presence in the UK and uh, maybe even over over your way if uh, if you can find someone to run it for me but um, yeah I just wanted to say thank you again for uh, leaving a link to our website in your videos thanks again Lars um, keep up the amazing work thank you and SpaceX is testing their hot gas thrusters. Hot gas thrusters are meaning to boost the efficiency of SpaceX Starship spacecraft and super heavy booster and have been spotted in public for the first time. And Elon has been tweeting before that these thrusters will be used on boosters for the first orbital flight. <laughs> Ooh, getting closer and closer to something really special here. And if you're wondering what that will look like, well, Alexander Swan made an amazing video, very realistic, about what this will look like. Even Elon tweeted, wow, oh my god, this is going to be absolutely epic. And we have been talking about it before here on this new show, the first private mission to orbit the inspiration and they have of course found the four person that is going to space and they have started their training and just did some training in SpaceX Dragon Simulator. And just to remind everyone, this mission, the first ever all civilian mission to space is happening in just 80 days my friend. I think this is just so exciting because this will really be the first step into a whole new era of space travel. Now private person can also go to space thanks to SpaceX. Is this just me that think this is totally awesome? And a quick word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. But I didn't just want to rush up a quick website just because of my sponsorship with Squarespace. But I am thinking of making a website where I can combine all my media outlets in one place. But it will take time to get this just right. But the good thing about Squarespace is that you can actually make a website in a very short amount of time. I tried all the platforms, but I must say, and not just because they are sponsoring me, but it is very easy using Squarespace templates. But you have so many customizations that you don't have to worry about your site looking exactly like everyone else. And because they to make it very simple they ask you what kind of website you want to build and therefore they will quickly get some templates that will work for you and fit your needs like if you want an online shop easy that is already built in and these powerful tools are also available on your mobile phone you can control your whole website edit it and post contents from your phone that is pretty cool and I must say just looking through all this gave me a lot of great ideas of what I want to put on my website and how I want it to work so I just want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this video but also for helping me to get a website coming to life so stay tuned for a best in Tesla website and head over to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch go to squarespace.com slash best in Tesla to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain enjoy and let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show yes it's time for the Tesla shorts Tesla just showed off their software power. Tesla's UI now estimates how long the wait is when superchargers are full by looking at the numbers of Tesla at the location not charging. That is awesome. Something that only Tesla can do. Nice. And Jay Leno showed off his new Tesla Plaid Model S. An unplugged performance is back at Pike's Peak, but this year it is not the Model 3 performance, but their Plaid Model S. It is just so scary to see them climb this mountain so fast. But it is going to be very exciting to see how they do in this race. And Evanex has got a new EV TV up and running with great reviews and videos about Teslas and EVs. And look at that handsome guy there, best in show. <laughs> well, thank you. And Panasonic's new CEO said they are ready to make a large investment in production of Tesla's 4680 cells if their test is successful at their pilot line. We did not get any timeline or amount of the investment, but nice to see. And Dubai Airport is filled with Teslas. Nice little clean taxi service there. 
I did just make a whole video about Tesla's short sellers and Alcid E Homes, but it is not only Best in Tesla that is reporting on Alcid E Homes anymore. Now we see Tasmania and MarketWatch reporting on them as well, because they did just make a strategic agreement with Tesla. That will come and put up solar panels and power walls and so on onto their 20 E Homes they have ready in Texas. Nice. And a Tesla was spotted in Nepal. I have reported on this many times before that solar is the cheapest form of energy already today. But now Bloomberg is waking up and realizing this fact. Nice. Eventually everyone will get it. And Elon Musk Boring Company is reportedly pitching a freight tunnel. Twice the size of the tunnels they are building today with room for two containers side by side. Nice. The New York Taxi and Limousine Commission TLC effort to block the deployment of 50 Tesla Model Y taxis from the electric transit startup Rivel were successful. And during the meeting TLC argued that Rivel will still be able to operate its Model Y taxis, provided that they will get rid of 50 gas cars first because they don't want more cars in New York. But they are an electric startup, they don't have any ice cars, so this is kind of ridiculous. Miami County has taken another step towards the electric future by adding 42 Proterra electric buses to its rapidly growing electric bus fleet, bringing the grand total of Proterra built EVs operating in Miami to 75. Nice. And I don't know if you remember, I showed a construction site not long ago in Prüm, Germany, that we did not know what it was for, but only that it was Tesla Groman Automation that was building it. But now we see almost a whole factory there. And it will of course be something with battery manufacturing, but other than that, we still don't know. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my newest patron and members of this YouTube channel. Paul Henry, Martin Barlow, Oren Haynes, Chris Konglocki, Jerry Moulton. And I thank you for watching member William Wu and my Be Nice and You Are member Our Wet Dogs. And my two new best in Tesla superheroes, Dallin Scott and Klaus Witchman. Thank you for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this show. Thank you. And let's end off with a bit of fun. We did hear that Dave Bezos is going to fly to space next month. So that is pretty cool. What is not so cool is the way that his rockets looks. And it kind of gave the host of today's news shows a big laugh. Rockets everywhere this morning. <laughs> well, outdoing his fellow billionaires in the race to space. <laughs> Amazon boss Jeff Bezos will blast into orbit next month. <laughs> Do you know what they call that? A rocket. They call it Blue Origin. <laughs> Does that look a little odd to you? It's <laughs> just me. <laughs> Joining us now for more. <laughs> Is Grow US up. correspondent <laughs> Alison Petrowski Alley. The Bezos flight will officially kick off the company's space tourism business. Yes. Yeah. That's right, Carl. Good morning to you, Carl. Good morning to you, Ali. Launch of the uh, interesting shaped rocket, thanks for pointing that out, Carl, will happen on July 20 <laughs> out of remote West, West Texas next month. That is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps this video out a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button or notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and 
be nice.